Ratings, I'm Chad. And I'm Nick. And since someone is ignoring my comments, we'll have to do it this way. And in this video, we'll be looking at the best historical slash medieval slash realistic weapons for a fantasy creature. And so in this episode, we will be looking at folk. So I'm just gonna let you set the scene and then I'll start complaining. I'm German, it's what we do. Their environment switches things up completely because of course the merfolk's main environment is, well, water. Water creates a lot of drag and so because of that not only is ranged weapons going to be affected as well, any weapon that has a large-ish kind of surface area is going to be the worst to try and use underwater because of the drag that, you know, it'd be like trying to hit through, well, molasses water, but yeah, it'll be really restricted. So I think the sword, maybe, I mean, I haven't gone under the water to test actually how much resistance the water creates in sword strikes. But the great thing about swords is that uh, you don't necessarily need heaps of power to do damage. If you're even able to place the blade of a sword on your opponent, you could do massive damage by pulling it back or pushing it forward in either a push or a draw cut. Now in regards to this style of combat, there is a type of sword that would assist these type of cuts massively, and it's curved swords. Cur swords, you know, you know, big curved swords. So I'm talking about you know, uh, tolwars, shamshirs and things. You know, the scimitar family of swords. For those of you who don't understand what I'm complaining about, let me explain. Shad's recommended tactic is to basically cuddle up to your opponent and do a push or pull cut. The problem is, like he said himself, steel swords are out of the question. And since we are underwater and fire doesn't work that well underwater, so basically any metalwork is out of the question. But like Shad pointed out, you don't have to make a sword out of metal. The problem is that cavemen didn't wield two-handed bone swords for a reason. For once, they didn't have D&D to inspire them, and for seconds, these things are either really big and unwieldy, and like Shad said... Any weapon that has a large-ish kind of surface area is going to be the worst to try and use underwater because of the drag... And if they are really thin, they basically have the consistency of 3D printed swords. Now, maybe some of you might suggest the Hawaiian shark teeth swords, but remember, we are supposed to cut through time and space, like a reap who studied the blade. We are not supposed to rip and tear like the Doom guy. And again, those blades tend to be a bit thicker than metal swords. So the advantage of having a small surface area underwater would be lost. And I will freely admit that I'm not a swords expert, but from what I've seen from corrugated blades, they pull and push cut not all that well, as soon as something as trivial as clothes is in the way. So basically what I'm saying is, shit, what the hell are you supposed to forge these scimitars out of? I mean, yeah, you could forge them out of sunshine, but I don't think that counts as a real option. So yeah, I would like an answer for that. Or in other words, notice me senpai.